called you, do you remember? I'm Barry Nichols. Well, I, I hope it's all right, but you said that if I ever needed you again, to come back. Well, I'm, I'm in a bit of a mess, you see, and uh, there's nowhere else I can go to. Oh, thanks. That's really good of you. intention to distress this court further by summarizing your crimes, as I think my views will be in accord with those of every civilized man and woman in this country. During 22 years on the bench, I have not found a more sickening nor disturbing case. I will concede that you, Yates, were not wholly aware of the depths of degradation to which your wife had sunk. Ultimately, though, your complicity and guilt were beyond question. Normally, I would have no hesitation to impose the death penalty on you both. However, in view of the doctor's reports in front of me, I have no alternative but to make out a Section 65 order that you both be committed within 28 days to a mental institution. And let the members of the public be assured that you shall remain in this mental institution until there can be no doubt whatsoever that you are fit and able to take your place in society again.
This was a nice place. He didn't serve tart. Oh, he did, did he? Yeah. We'll see about that, Alex. Alex! Is that him over there? Yeah. I want a word with you, mate. Sure. Put your turn, will you? How would you like a fist in your face, you smart bastard? Is this what you're gonna get? What's the matter with you? Piss off! What did you call this girl? What did you call her? Nothing, I called her nothing. Well, oh, she's underage. Who oh, says she is? What did you call her? He called me a tart, I'll kill him. Call her a tart, eh? I didn't call her anything! Right, that's it, John. Out. Pronto. You, I said, out. <laughs> pushed his wife out of bed because he wanted a matte finish. <laughs> You've got to laugh, haven't you? Mm. Haven't you, Graham? Oh, yes, very funny. He's probably analysing the psychology of humour. <laughs> no, no, I stopped work at six. Uh, and I had heard it before. What do you do? I'm afraid I'm a psychiatrist. Don't do Apologise, Graham. It's force of habit. People tend to go quiet every time I mention it. Mm -hmm. Well, Jackie wrote. She knows quite a lot about psychiatry. Well, I don't. Do you go to one? Me? Oh, no. It's just that a sister needs one. Well. Sorry. Um, my sister's a bit of an extrovert. Huh? Well, she's a bit wild, but she's perfectly all right. Well, if she's your sister, she must be. Hi, bye. <clears throat> well, yes, that's managed to kill off the conversation as usual, Graham. Well done. I think we'll get some more wine. That's him. Good night, Mike. See you tomorrow. Hello, barman. Give us a drink, barman. Where are you going, eh? We didn't finish our chat. Come on. Don't you want to have a chat? There's a friend of yours here. Do you remember her? Do you remember her? Yeah. Now, you were a bit rude to her. Do you remember that? She's lying to you. I wouldn't serve her a drink, that's all. She's... I thought she was underage. Calling her a liar now, are ya? I am lying! Oh! <laughs> 
knock it off! Now let's get out of here! You're really so good at this sort of thing, it makes me mad. Yes, well, I'm uh, thinking of taking it up for a living. <laughs> Bye. Thanks a lot, Mo. Thanks for coming, Guy. Bye. Bye, love. I'll see you tomorrow. Right, love. Uh, don't forget McDonald's late comers porridge. Hmm. <laughs> Look who's talking. Now, now. Hey, can I help you with that? Oh, yes. I like a bit of that sort of thing. Oh, well, uh, can I give you a ring tomorrow? Yes, please. Right. Now, that's enough of that sort of thing. He's got his career to think of. Yeah, so has he. God, finals in six days. Yeah. Good night, all. Right. Good night. See you. Bye. Bye. Did you uh, like her, Graham? Yeah, well, she actually she was um, uh, rather super. <laughs> I told you she was a looker. You didn't believe me. Well, are you coming or? Uh... Uh, no, 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 no. I'll be keeping here tonight. Yeah. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Fine. See you. Bye. Thanks for having me. See you, Mel. Okay. Bye. I suppose you know what time it is. Well, what are you doing? Nothing. I'm going to bed. It's five past two in the morning. Yeah, that's why I'm going to bed. Debbie, I've told you before. You I'm not interested in what you've told me before. I'm not interested in you. So why are you so interested in me? I'm responsible for you. Well, don't be. Our parents are dead and you're not my mother, however much you'd like to think you are. I was made responsible for you when you got slung out of that orphanage, you silly don't little... Don't keep calling it an orphanage! Orphanage? Convent? What difference does it make? Oh, don't be so childish. I'm old enough to do what I like. You're only 15 and I'm buggered if I'm going to... Debbie, look, I don't want to have to wait up for you again. Don't give me that. I beg your pardon. Well, you're not setting up for me. You're waiting to go out. What are you dressed for? You're waiting to go out like you always do. And don't say you don't because I've heard you. You creep out and you creep back two hours later. And if you can go out at two o'clock, I can come in at two o'clock. Do you know who they were? Now I couldn't see. I know them. One of them's called Alec. They've been here before. Your barman turned up yet? No, he must have gone home, I suppose. Funny the way they were laying into him. I thought he would have come inside to get patched up. Found anything, Sergeant? There's quite a bit of blood round here. We better find out what's going on, hadn't we?
it's spitting. Must be a piece of slate on it. You made me jump. Didn't mean to. I can't stay long, I'm afraid. Yes, you're later than usual, aren't you? Yes, I had some trouble. Debbie's found out. What? That I creep out of the house at all hours of the night. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That was inevitable, wasn't it? Mm. I'll make something up, I suppose. Have you brought it? Of course I've brought it. Good. How is she? She's better, I think. Well, better than she has been, anyway. Although... What? I don't want her to hear me. Well, where is she? I don't know. But she's taken to just standing, listening. I don't know why. What were you going to say? Well, it could be my imagination, but... I have a feeling that she's trying to make me believe that she is better. You mean she's guessed what we're doing? Jackie! Hello, darling. Hello, Mother. How are you, dear? Very well, you? You're standing there letting that fire go out, aren't you, really? We're going to bed soon. Yes. Well, I still have one or two things to do, haven't I? Yes. Just one or two little things. It's, it's such fun being a night person, isn't it, Jackie? Some people are day people, but we like being night people, don't we? Night people. How's your migraine? I, I haven't had a migraine for many, many months now. I thought you knew that. Things have been so very much better since we came here. I think I left all my headaches and problems behind at the other place. I closed the door very carefully when I left and I locked them all in. Well, perhaps you won't be needing the parcels for very much longer. Thank you so much for bringing it, Jackie. Oh. oh, dear. It's left a mark on the table. I'll see to it, Dorothy. Why don't you just go and take it away? Thank you so much. I I'll see you next week. Next week. go. Are you all right for money? Yes, thank you, dear. We've got everything we need. We haven't even touched Sir Joseph's Christmas bonus yet. He's a very generous man. All right, then. Good night, Dad. Good night, dear. Take care, both of you.
Miss Deborah Yates. That's my sister. So after you came out of the discotheque, you went round the back to get your bikes, mm -hmm. and then Alec... Um, Alec Marini saw Magic the Barman. That's right. And you went over to him? No, just Alec and the boys. Well, I stayed by the bikes with the other two girls. What did Alec do? I don't know. He followed this guy around the corner and we heard a bit of shouting. And Alec said that this guy ought to watch who he was being cheeky to. That's all, and then they came back and we went home. He didn't ask what happened? No, he wouldn't have told me anyway. And you didn't see the bar one again? No. I see. It's not quite the story as Marini told it. Look, it's what happened. Fair enough. Whether this goes any further or not will depend on what Magic the Barman has to say. Meanwhile, young lady, I should be careful of the company you keep. Right, two ultimatums. Firstly, if the police ever come here again, I'm not covering up for you, do you understand? And secondly, my salary will not support two people. You've got three interviews. If you haven't got a job by the end of the week, you can get out, which is what you want to do anyway. You can fend for yourself and see how that grabs you. With the staff and operational personnel of the Robin Hood Junior production, report to say... No, don't touch it. How am I supposed to blow my nose? With great difficulty. <laughs> Oh, I'm actually going into a corner for the rest of the day. Oh, you in your small corner and me in mine. Everything's really getting me down, Mel. Darling, in this job, anything less than the screaming abdabs is perfectly normal. Hello? Yes? Why? I've got to talk to you. I wouldn't have phoned if it hadn't been urgent. But... Look, I'm outside. I've driven Sir Joseph to his stockbrokers. It won't take long, I promise you. It's terribly difficult. Please, Jackie. It's about Dorothy. All right. All right, I'll come out. I've got to go and see somebody. Can you... Yes, don't worry. Yes. Oh, I read this advert in Time Out. I, I think it's very interesting that... Yes, I, I'm sure you do, dear. It's a fascinating, fascinating subject. Uh, come in. You. Your timing's immaculate. I've just put the kettle on. Be down in a while. Aren't I rude keeping you waiting like that? You don't mind, do you? Oh, of course not. Now, we must get down to work. It's so... Oh, I don't know what to say. It, it's all so accurate. Exciting, isn't it? unnerving. We should have finished that earlier. It's, it distracts me. I'm sorry. Swords, swords, 
swords, swords. It's all strife, isn't it? Strife and heartache and loneliness. Not a lot of friends. None at all to speak of. No. No close family ties. No romantic involvement, not even round the corner. Never. Never any. This is the card that shows what lies ahead, Lillian. Oh, it's symbolic, of course. It predicts an end to the strife and the loneliness. Very soon. Last night, after you left. That still doesn't prove she knows we're tricking her. It does. And I've found something else as well. What? I didn't want you to know, Jackie. Oh, for Christ's sake. I've been involved in this since I was eight years old. What could there possibly be that you can't tell me about? Look, I just want you to trust me. Come down tonight and talk to her. No. Look, I can't seem to make her talk to me, but you can. She'll tell you the truth. I can't come tonight. I'm going out. Got a date. Oh, that woman has had enough of my time already. I'm not going to let her wreck my love life as well. Look, I'm sorry, Dad, but I've got to draw the line somewhere. Jackie. I didn't want to show you. Show me. That's all right. Robin's seen it. I'll ask him what happened. <laughs> I feel so guilty about this. Oh, don't worry. It can't be helped. Look, I'll, I'll take you home. You do no such thing. I've ruined the evening already. I'm not going to let you put yourself out any further. Oh, don't be silly. It doesn't matter. It means a lot to me. My bus goes from over the road. It drops me right past my door. Promise you'll ring me tomorrow? Yeah, all right. I'm terribly sorry. studying all evening. I thought you were going out all evening. OK, OK, I'll go to the pub. No, you don't. Don't be a martyr. We're all friends here. Friendship does have its limits. I am not suggesting a menage a trois, dear. Thank God for that. Oh, go and make the coffee. It's uh, freezing out, isn't it? Well, I can go if you like. Sit down, Graham, and don't pretend you've got any intention of leaving. What's with this 9.30 routine? She slapped your face or something? I should have to go home. Some relative coming down from Glasgow. I don't know. Oh, she didn't mention it to me. I think it was an excuse, actually. But don't tell her I said so. No, of course not. Mind you, you're probably right. Mm. Is there someone else? Someone else? No. It's that sister of hers. She's driving Jackie up the wall, the little cow. Ah, uh, yes, you mentioned her at dinner. Hmm. What's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? What's right with her? She's a bloody delinquent. She's absolutely uncontrollable. Do you know they had the police there this morning? Well, didn't Jackie tell you? No, she didn't tell me. Well... Oh. 
She wouldn't. She spends half her life trying to sort that kid's life out and then pretends everything's peaches and cream. The sooner they get that kid to a psychiatrist, the better. Now, well, here I am. You wait till you're asked. You wait a long time. Well, I better offer then. What, now? Why not? Jackie. I'm not going to make a big thing of this, Dad. I'm staying half an hour and that's all. I don't go in yet. I don't have a word with you. This is a waste of time, you know. I've been thinking about what you showed me. There's a simple explanation. There must be. Keep your voice down, please. Dad, she's been in an asylum for 15 years. She must be cured. We've both been in an asylum, Jackie. Well, then you ought to know it better than anyone else. I found something else this evening, Jackie. Oh, God, no. Look. What are they? Tarot cards. Found them in a drawer. So? Well, it takes two to play that game, Jackie. And if I'm not the other one, who is? Who are you talking to, Eddie? Oh, Jackie, it's you. How nice. How are you feeling, Mother? See, see how much I've done since I saw you last week. I've almost finished. How are you feeling, Mother? Pardon, dear? You heard what I said. Mother, I know we agreed not to talk about the past, but Dad and I have been discussing... Jackie. Oh, I've got such a migraine tonight, I can hardly see the stitches. The migraine you haven't had for months. I don't understand you, dear. You understand every word I say, Mother. You just choose to ignore most of it, that's all. Jackie, don't. I, There's no need. I don't know what's come over you, Jackie. Just tell me one thing, Mother. Are you well? Am I well, dear? I, I don't understand. You know what I mean. I... Have you started again? <gasps> oh, how can you? How can you ask me that? How can you be so cruel? That was months ago. Years ago. That was in the old place. So long ago, so many years ago, all over so long ago. Then what are these? Oh, hello. You, Debbie? Yeah. Is your sister in? No. She's not? Oh, um, any idea when she'll be back? Well, my name's Graham Haller. Actually, it was you I wanted to speak to. Do you mind if I come in for a minute? Thank you. They come and go. Lonely people. All lonely people, not a friend in the world. And I help them. I haven't got a friend in the world. You know that. We're Only you. We're trying to help you, Mother. You're trying to help me back into that asylum. That's what you're trying to do. Try, trying to trick me into thinking I'm not better when I am. All right, then, Mother. All I've done is ask you one question. And I've given you an answer. I never go out of this house. It's so lonely here all day. Can't I have any interests? And those cards are my property. Give them back to me, you thief. You don't like me having anything of my own, do you? I'm not allowed to keep anything. Oh, Eddie. They even took my baby away from me. My only child. She... she doesn't even know I exist. Oh, now, Dorothy. Won't have you upsetting yourself like this. There's no need. We're going to forget that any of this happened. You, you plotted it all between you. No, no. Jackie insisted on coming down. Dad! But it's all over now. We're going to forget that any of this ever happened. We're not going to mention it again. And we're going to go on just like we were. 
Just the two of us together. Hmm? Well, I've lost my needle. I'll get you another one, dear. You know how I look forward to your visits, Jackie. With your little parcels. I do appreciate the trouble you take. You know that, don't you? You will keep on bringing them, won't you, dear? Just to please me. You will, won't you? Did anyone ever tell you you've got a great bedside manner? I don't think that's quite the right expression, is it? Well, it is for what I've got in mind. Thank you, Doctor. Graham. Thank you, Graham. You were telling me about the orphanage. No, I wasn't. You said you didn't like it. I didn't like it. Look, I don't want to talk about it. It's boring. Did you resent being there? you screwing Jackie? I asked first. Well, if I tell you, will you tell me? No. That's not fair. Did you ever see a photo of your parents? I don't know. I can't remember. I don't even care about them. Why should I? I haven't even met them. I think you do care, Debbie. I think you care very much. Showman, but I can't stand his music. Oh, he's a great musician. He was at the Rainbow last week. Really? I know he had hysterics. Hmm. We waited for him to come out afterwards, but he didn't come. Yeah. Jackie went mad because he didn't get home till three. Did you? <laughs> oh, hello, Jackie. How long have you been here? Not long. We've just been having a little chat. You don't mind, do you? It's time you were in bed. Oh, for Christ's sake! Don't shout at me. I'll shout at you. I'll shout at you whenever I like! Show him off! Well, where do you think you're going? Out. You're not, you know. Try and stop me. Don't treat her like a child. Thank you very much. How much do I owe you for that piece of analysis? Why don't you try sitting down and talking to her for a change? Well, I'll certainly think about that, Graham. After all, you seem to have achieved so much. Yes, we were getting on quite well, actually. Talking about me, I suppose. No, mostly about your parents. I just wish you'd asked me first, that's all. But you would have said no. Look, Jackie, Mel says you like to pretend that nothing's the matter. But something is the matter, and Debbie can be helped. By you? Yes, I'd like to try. Look, it's too early to draw any conclusions. I'd have to spend much more time with her, but it's pretty obvious that she's suffering from some identity problem. Oh, I can't stand that job. Yes, well, it's very simple if you just listen. Look, on the surface, she seems cold and insensitive, but that's because she's got no background, no, no roots. 
She doesn't seem to have been given much understanding in the orphanage. So this is the result. But Debbie's got an additional problem in the shape of a close relative, you, who refuses to tell her anything about her parents. Now, why won't you discuss it with her? You must remember them. Listen, the one thing you're conveniently leaving out, Graham, is the fact that I know a damn sight more about her than you do, and I know how to handle her. Oh, Jackie, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't think you do. Jackie, I'm trying to help. I want to help you. I don't need help. Graham, I'm very tired. We're going to have to leave it there. Yes, you've had a very busy evening, haven't you? Good night, Graham. How are you going to do it? Somerset House. Did Jackie ask you to? No. Why are you doing it then? I don't know, really. I think you need your head examined. Where he was, you'd be in a cell by now. I didn't do that to him. Look at his head. I didn't do that. Who did then? But I hardly. Oh, Christ. What are we going to do? Dump him off. Where? Well, you bring your brother's van round tonight and we'll go and stick him in the quarry. No. Leave him there then. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Dave. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, David. Uh, Dr. Lytell, uh, could you spare me a moment now, please, sir? Oh, Graham, of course. By all means, come on in. I should have seen you long ago, but I just had one of those mornings. Right, thank you, sir. Now, what's your problem? Forgive me if I potter a bit while we're talking. Well, it's a favour, actually, sir. I was wondering if you could give me an introduction to one of the supervisors at the Lansdowne Hospital. The Lansdowne? Well, that's a bit off your beat. What are you working at? Well, it's a patient of mine, sir. She's under the impression she? that her pa Yes, it's a young lady. Yes, I see. Well, she's under the impression that her parents are dead, but they're not. I found out that they were committed to the Lansdowne in 1957, and I'm trying to find out why. You have been busy. Well, I think it's important, sir. Is it vital? Yes, I think so. Fair enough. If it's vital, I'll get you in touch with Matt Lawrence. He's the medical superintendent of the Lansdowne. Oh, well, I didn't expect you to go to all that trouble, sir. No, no, it's nothing. He and I are old friends. We were at King's together. Give me a line, will you? Did you cut them, dear? Yes. Then... Uh... We shall see what we shall see. You warm enough? I'm fine, thanks. It does get so chilly here sometimes. You didn't come by car, did you? Why? No, I don't think you did. Now, this signifies you, dear, the Queen of Pentacles. Cunning, passionate, self-reliant. This covers you. So this crosses you, this beneath you, this behind you, this crowns you, and this is before you.
I think you've had a sudden loss, haven't you? Not a death, a sudden departure. Someone you love. I think it's your husband. Yes? Yes. You did say your name was Delia, didn't you? You don't like being left on your own, do you, Delia? You're frightened you're going to be left by yourself. But don't worry about that, will you, dear? You said you were alone. Sometimes the little animals come in and go all over the place. They're awfully naughty. <laughs> Do you like little animals, little squirrels and things? I'm not all that fussy. There's one peeping at you down there. <laughs> no, not really. My husband. Will he come back? What else do you know about him? Nothing. But I know everything about you. One look and I know it all. Then perhaps you'd like to tell me. Perhaps you'd like to tell me. Perhaps I wouldn't. Delia. Look, I've paid you a considerable amount of money. There is your future! <laughs> You're quite mad. I suppose you know that. <laughs> You've locked this door. Dorothy! 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 Oh, my God! What have you been doing to them? She was a cannibal. 
I'm sorry? I can't put it more daintily than that, I'm afraid. The fact is, she ate people. Horrifying, but thankfully quite unique. Caused a bit of a scandal in 1957. Probably you remember. I'm afraid I was a bit too young. Oh, yes, yes, of course, I tend to forget. What was the case history? Oh, it goes way back. What is it, Aunt Thank you. Here we are. Yes. She had a pet she was very fond of when she was a girl. Rabbit or something similar. And it died. I'm afraid the parents were foolish enough to use it as food. It was right in the middle of the Depression, late 20s, early 30s. Meat was hard to get hold of. And she found out. She went into such shock that she twisted the horror of the situation to something pleasurable. She began killing animals and dissecting them, eating them. Secretly, of course. Nobody found out about it for years. Oh, God. She was especially interested in their brains, I remember. They held some sort of weird fascination for her. How long before she started on... On people? Well, the time she met her husband, uh, what was his name? Edmund. It was 1955. She was a hopeless case. The craving had become almost uncontrollable. And he, it seems, helped her to find human victims. They killed six people before they were caught. They were sent here in 1957. It was the only case of carabanthropy on record in this country. Carry what? Carabanthropy. Pathological cannibalism. There's a couple of cases in the United States, almost unheard of anywhere else. They had children, this couple, didn't they? Oh, you were one up on me then. Oh, yes, there was a daughter born in 1948. Jackie. Jacqueline, that's right. Yes, she was the daughter of the father's previous marriage. She was sent to live with an aunt who later died, apparently. And there was another daughter, Deborah, born shortly after the couple were committed. Yeah, they put her in an orphanage. That's right. Suddenly it all makes sense. Do I always felt that the father was the more interesting of the parents? You see, it's always been my opinion that he should never have been committed. It was never really established that he had anything to do with the actual murders. We knew about them, certainly. But I think it was more of a case of his being totally devoted to his wife, turning a blind eye to absolutely anything that she might do. You know, even towards the end, I was almost certain that he was deliberately faking derangement in order that he might remain here with his wife. Towards the end? You mean they died? No, 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 they were released. That was some months ago. He's got a job, I believe, um, some aristocrat's dog's body or something. Released? Well, don't look so flabbergasted about it. We didn't kick them out just for the fun of it. They're completely cured. As sane as you are, I. He won't tell anyone, will you, Eddie? It'll be our secret, won't it? You won't tell, will you? I haven't got much choice, have I? Well, no one would be interested. I mean, these people, they've no friends, no relations. No one will miss them. Are they all in here? Most of them. Let's go back, Eddie. When did you find out about the parcels? Find out, dear. You? You've known all along, haven't you? Well, I wanted to please you, Eddie. You started as soon as you left the Lansdowne, didn't you? Let's go back, Eddie. It's not right that you should be here. In future, I, I, I'll come here by myself. In future? You're going to tell me everything. That's just my jacket. Everything. I couldn't bear it, Eddie. What? To be sent back. You won't be sent back. You, you do understand, then? I understand. And you're not angry with me? Not angry. I 
always wondered why people got glasses of water thrust at them when they've been crying. It relaxes you. Really? Do you want to talk about it? Yes, I do, quite honestly. Oh, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Breaking down like the fragile creature I'm not. Um, you were saying you've been researching something. No, it can wait. Come on, tell me what's wrong. I feel like falling on my knees and asking for forgiveness. Why? I was wrong about Debbie. I should have taken everybody's advice. Now it's too late. Why? She got involved in a fight a couple of nights ago. A man was killed. She told you? No. I found her jacket covered in blood. I had to force her to tell me. Did... Did Debbie kill the man? No. No, her... Her boyfriend, so called, he... He hit him with a... Oh, a thing, a bicycle chain. Debbie panicked and hit... Hit the body. Christ. Oh, come on. That's the worst over now. Finding out and then having to tell me. I don't know. I'm, I'm so worried about the police. Well, there's no need to be. Debbie's committed a crime. Well, I want to do all I can to help you both. My offer still holds, you know. I don't deserve you, do I? <laughs> we'll have to do something about that inferiority complex of yours, won't we? Is she here? In her room. We're leaving now, Debbie. Okay. Oh, don't worry. It'll be all right. Graham knows what to do. Oh, you better give me the key. We'll be back as soon as we can. Now, see you soon, Debbie. Now, stay here till we get back, won't you? with a bicycle chain. Look, I'm sorry, but I don't understand. Well, what are you talking about? I might have a word for your sister, please, miss. Well, what did you mean when you said it was more than murder? Exactly what I said. Now, if we can go back to your flat, please. <laughs> she's gone, Graham, she's gone. The wardrobe's empty and her suitcase is missing. This is a missing persons call to all units. Deborah Yates, aged 15 and wanted for questioning in connection with the murder of Douglas Metchik on February the 27th, is missing from her home in Beaufort Street, SW10. Is 5 foot 2, light brown hair, light colouring. We're wearing jeans and that's good. It's a bit early for me. You're over 18, aren't you? Early in the evening, idiot. Oh. Well, just think of it as Dr. Haller's nerve tonic. My nerves need more than a tonic, I can tell you. Neat. Of course. Cheers. Better? Give it time. I've made rather a mess of it, haven't I? Oh, I wouldn't say that. You would if you knew everything. I think I do. You don't, Graham. That's the trouble. I was at Lansdowne today. And I still wouldn't say it made a mess of anything. What I can't understand is why you feel you've still got something to be guilty about. Look, your parents were certified sane, Jackie, and that's the way you've got to learn to treat them. I, I know it must have been difficult for you, but don't you see it's all over now? It's not all over, Graham. I'm afraid it's just beginning again. I can't see nothing. We're in the middle of nowhere. What is all this? Look, I told you, it's a place where they won't find us. Stay here, I want to see if everything's all right. Well, hurry up. Freezing me bollocks off out here. I don't like your gloomy face, Eddie. Reminds me of a gargoyle. Gloomy enough here already. Only the little animals are happy. 
They come and see me sometimes when you're not here, Eddie. I wish you could be here during the day to see them. What's the matter? The noise. Someone else in the house. Who are you? Hello, Dad. Believe it. It's our little girl, Eddie. It's true. Hasn't she grown? Oh, my God, I wanted to protect her from this. We were going to tell you, Eddie, in time. How long has she known? I've always known. Jackie told me. She promised. She promised me. Who else have you told? My boyfriend outside. She's so grown up, isn't she? Of Jackie, it's absolutely ludicrous. It was Dad's idea. A week after they left Lansdowne, he realized something was wrong. Dorothy used to just sit and gaze into the fire. It seems she was pining away. So you decided to play amateur psychiatrist? You seriously thought you could diminish her so called killing instincts by pretending you were doing it for her and taking down these ridiculous things that you bought from the butchers? It seemed to work. And anyway, Dad wouldn't consider the alternative. And what was the alternative? She'd be sent back to Lansdowne. I'm sorry, Jackie, you don't know what the hell you're thinking about. Dorothy was in the best care for 17 years. She was certified sane. But I swear, there's still something wrong. All right, she's probably going through a period of readjustment. But if there is something wrong, it can easily be remedied by a course of outpatient treatment. In her own home, if necessary. I never considered anything like that. I had nobody to talk to. Well, you have now. Eight o'clock. Well, what about it? Well, you could be down there in an hour and a half. Well, it's hardly likely a psychiatrist will make a house call in the middle of the night, is it? Oh, that's right. You could go for a reading. With her set of marked tarot cards. <sighs> You're going? Hmm. Something else I want to check on. About Dorothy? No, about Debbie. Debbie? Hmm. After all, she is Dorothy's daughter. No alternative. No alternative, Eddie. The boy knew everything. I mean, we've got to wipe the slate clean, haven't we? How many more? How many more before the slate is wiped clean? One more. 
Jackie. No! No! Stop kidding yourself, Dad. Forget about Jackie. She's an enemy. I won't listen She's to this. She's an enemy, I tell you. She's going to break this family up. You watch your sick. You don't know what you're talking I about. I know, Father. That's all she wants to do, break us up. She tried to keep me away from you for as long as she could, didn't she? No, no, no arguing. Not when we're all together again. This has gone too far, Deborah. I can't handle this anymore. Is it for you? We never have visitors. Police? Take her to the attic, Dorothy. All right, Eddie. This way, dear. Good evening. I'm sorry to trouble you so late. I wonder if Mrs. Yates could give me a reading. Not at this time, I'm afraid. Oh, well, um, look, it's rather difficult for me, you see. I'm staying overnight in the area, and I'm leaving early in the morning, so I won't get another chance. Perhaps you could call in next time you're passing. Well, perhaps I could persuade you. You see, I'm rather worried about my health. Um, I think I may be very ill, and uh, I'd like to know one way or the other. You understand? Come in. Oh, I'm very grateful. I won't stay any longer than necessary. Wait here. Thank you. I'll tell my wife. Will you go through? Hail to the Knight of Pentacles. I'm sorry? You are the Knight of Pentacles. This is your card. Oh, I see. Sit down. The other side. Would you like me to pay you beforehand? Yes. Your name was? Robin. I'm a commercial traveller, just staying in the village for one night. How did you know about me? A friend recommended you. His name? Well, he's not exactly a friend. It was a party, and um, I heard him talking about you. Do you travel in medical supplies? No. I see healing hands. You're either something to do with a hospital, or you're a doctor. Well, that, that'll be all the doctors I've been to. There have been so many. <laughs> it's not the doctors you've been to. I'm telling you, it's you. Well, I was a medical student once. It was a long time ago. Were you now? You're worried about something. Yes, very. A girl. Mm. No, two girls. Two girls. There's a romantic involvement with one and some other involvement with the other. Now, what is it? <laughs> Isn't that strange? I come back to the healing hands. Why are you lying to me? I'm not lying to you. You called me Mrs. Yates. You've come here for a purpose. To have my fortune told. No, no, there's something else. Now, what is it? I've told you, I'm worried about... Be I'm worried quiet. about... Be quiet. 
You've come here to search. You're searching for... No. No, not searching. Investigating. Investigating me! You're dead right, he is. Debbie! What did he tell you his name was? This is Robin, my dear. This is Graham, my dear. Dr. Graham Haller, to be exact. One of Jackie's little friends. She sent him down here to put you back in the nut house. Now, that's not true. You know it isn't. You lie. You lie. You lie. You lie. I have the proof here in the cards. Come on, love. We're waiting for you. I'm sorry, Merla. I just can't concentrate. Oh, don't worry, kid. We'll wind it up. No, no, we'll go on. No, no, it was just one of my stupid ploys to try and get your mind off things. You're obviously not up to it. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't worry, kid. We'll have a chat instead. After all, that's what you came round for, isn't it? <laughs> yes, very much so. I just couldn't bear sitting alone in the flat, just waiting. Well, what are friends for? Oh, bugger, hang on a minute. What really drove me out tonight? What? I knew that any second the phone would ring and it would be the police to say they'd found Debbie. That'd be the end, wouldn't it? Jackie, you're building this up into something it isn't. Why would it be the end? They don't send 15-year-old girls to prison anymore, you know. They send them to a reformatory. They're not going to send Debbie anywhere. Jackie, it's for you. Who knows I'm here? Well, I uh, wouldn't swear to it, but it sounds like Debbie. Hello? Jackie, it's Debbie. Debbie, where are you? I'm at the farm. The what? I'm at the farm with Mum and Dad. But how? Look, no, I can't explain now. Will you come down? Yes, of course. Graham's here. Yes, I know. You will come down, won't you? Straight away. OK, see you then. Debbie! I'm flying high with an ace. <laughs> you <laughs> Was it her? Yes. Well, where is she? Well, she's found a place to hide. Oh, are you going? I must. Well, what about the police? I don't know. I don't know. Jackie! Debbie, is that you? I almost hoped you wouldn't come, Jackie. What are you prowling around with the bloody lights off for? I won't be spoken to like that in my own home, especially by you. Especially by me? What am I supposed to have done? You hurt me, Jackie. You've heard all of us. What are you talking about? What's Debbie been saying to you? She's told us the truth. And you believed it? She is my daughter. And I'm not, I suppose. We both feel closer to Deborah. You stupid old man! How dare you! You've been taken in by a 15-year-old delinquent! All right, then. If that's the way you want it, you can get along without me. You can all get along without me. I'll wash my hands of the lot of you! Shh! Jackie, if only you hadn't come. What is it? 
What's going on? Where's Graham? Who? The man who... For oh, God's sake, I'm not going to stand here talking to you in the bloody twilight! No, Jackie! Don't put the lights on. What's the matter with you? Nothing. You've been hit. You've been hit with something. Who was it? It was Dorothy, wasn't it? She did it with, with this. Stepmother's a very sick woman, Jackie. How sick? How sick? She's had a very serious relapse, I'm afraid. Jackie, I love her. Can you understand that? But I can't do any more for her now. Deborah's looking after her. Looking after her? What do you mean, looking after her? She's with her now. A fifteen-year-old girl? I don't believe it. They have a lot in common, you know. More in common than you would think. Where's Graham? Where is he? They said she was well again. They said she was well. Graham? Graham! Leave us alone, Jackie. Let the members of the public be assured that you shall remain in this mental institution until there can be no doubt whatsoever that you are fit and able to take your place in society again.